Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for its and gold fundamental and technical analysis. Um, if you're new, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you. And please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Press that like button and subscribe button. Um, I'm not even sure whether the uh, YouTube algorithms really... Um, uh, that the, the notification button is actually useful from watching on some videos on YouTube saying that uh, even though you press the notification button it might not uh, actually uh, give you the notification but press it anyway and um, if you want to be kept up to date with um, you know the latest trading 180 videos anyways um, getting into the key events this week and this is from um, ING and uh, so uh, next week's US inflation numbers will need to be quite surprising uh, for the Fed to deviate from a 75 basis point hike at its September meeting. Yeah, so um, that's really what the market is looking uh, towards um, is, is inflation um, and also as well the Bank of England. Um, I think they actually delayed uh, one of their scheduled meetings. Uh, except, uh, I think the yeah, postponement of the Bank of England's uh, scheduled meeting. So, um, really, this week is you know for the again developed markets, the major markets um, is really about uh, U.S. core inflation, and it's likely to rise to six point one percent. Bank of England stick to fifty basis point uh, rate hike despite energy package from List Trust. And uh, we have GDP, July GDP on Monday. I think that's the month for month one. Um, the jobs on Tuesday for the uh, UK and inflation on Wednesday as well. So, um, yeah, a few things um, uh, to, to, to watch out for. Eurozone, I think, also has uh, August CPI numbers as well. So that might be something worth uh, watching. Eurozone US yeah, pretty much everything else is um, is by the by. So um, a few things to definitely watch this week, and uh, let's get you know into I guess the uh, the technicals and what's happened uh, fundamentally uh, last week, and potentially what may happen in the future. So starting off on the dollar index, and the dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against uh, major currencies like the pound, the euro, and the yen, and some others, and. Um, just watching, uh, obviously, uh, dollar strength over the past, uh, looking back over the past year, you know, has just been um, uh, um, kind of predictable when you, if you've kept up with what's been happening uh, fundamentally, and you understand, I guess, what what that the fact that the U.S. is really um, uh, one of the better uh, um, countries and currencies dealing with, um, you know, the crisis as far as or many crisis. Uh, um, events that are going on around the world um, so uh, yeah let's get into the Bloomberg article so jumbo fed rate hike as we already know is in play as Powell sticks to hawkish view so fed chair uh, sp uh, speaks as bets for 75 basis point hike harden uh, says fed uh, has accepted um, and accepts responsibility for price stability price is basically in inflation so basically the federal reserve uh, jerome powell said officials won't flinch in the battle to curb inflation hardening expectations that they'll deliver a third straight jumbo hike um, later this month and we we need to act now forthrightly strongly as we have been doing powell said Thursday in remarks at the Cato Institute's Monetary Policy Conference in Washington. My colleagues and I are strongly committed to the project and will keep at it. Uh, he spoke uh, with a moderator in a virtual question and answer session. So um, what that basically means is that they're going to continue to hike. And what does that mean for the dollar? And what, you know, in, in trading, this is basically a game of probabilities. Um that you know that that is being priced in in so far as uh you know the the fact that the dollar's going higher and higher um is being priced in so it's a you know the, the money has really been made right is the buy the rumor um you know happened was happening and has been happening all this time right just basically buying a rumor and confirming with data now with um cpi data right um uh, consumer prices index that's going to be a major um uh, uh, I guess signal uh, as to 
whether the Federal Reserve, and I spoke about this last week, right, whether the Federal Reserve will continue to uh, hike at 75 basis points. Yeah, that is going to be key. If inflation comes down, yeah, and it's, I wouldn't say necessarily disappointing because in fact, um, the, the US actually want inflation to come down. All central banks want, want inflation to come down to their 2% target, right? Now, if um, inflation does you know, come down from, I think it was, a, what was it, 8.5, 8.6, something like that. And if, let's say, for example, it stays around there or, you know, it starts to plateau or it actually comes out as, as lower than, than, the, than the previous number, then the Fed are likely to do what? Maybe hike at uh, 50 basis points because they won't need to, um, to hike aggressively, which then would actually, should ha actually have the effect of, the dollar probably selling off and being repriced, right? Revalued because this, you know, value, right? The uh, the dollar appreciating is based off of, you know, the market getting ahead of a 75 basis point hike. And I'm not saying it can't go higher. It, it probably could potentially this week go higher, but the, the market has already priced in what the 75 basis point hike and the value of the dollar should be. Now it would have to reprice the dollar, yeah? if there's a um, um, a smaller um, uh, hike, right? So then you would, if, and that would be triggered by uh, CPI data, right? So CPI data will trigger that. And so depending again on whether, you know, inflation is, is continued, continuing to rise or if it falls sharply, uh, that will determine the, what happens really with the dollar this week. And one of the things you should, um, go to on my uh, YouTube page, try to find, or um, if you go on YouTube and do a search, is my fundamental analysis webinar, the three steps to generating profitable Forex trade ideas. If you don't understand the relationship between inflation uh, and interest rates, as well as uh, GDP as well. It's uh, the uh, webinar is about, you know, two hours long, and uh, it gives you really a kind of basic uh, foundation as to understanding um, how you can navigate, um, I guess, uh, uh, you know, Forex and, uh, you know, pick directions and really kind of predict trends, etc. And whether the, you know, it's a market that you want to, you should be buying or selling or whether it's a market that you should be staying out of, right? So, uh, going back to uh, DXY, so, um, yeah, moving forward, I probably expect if, again, uh, CPI data comes out, um, uh, positive as far as it, it's seen as growing then you would probably want to still continue to buy the dollar and pullbacks um, uh, we do have uh, prices have come down to this uh, this demand zone but also as well the uh, monthly moving fair value um, which is basically just a moving fair um, uh, moving average it's got the e um, EMA uh, exponential and a simple moving average but uh, in, in the context of understanding value uh, an average or a mean um, uh, is is actually what would be considered fair value because if this is expensive, right, and it is a bargain price, then if we're looking at you know the last twenty one days, which is twenty one days in a trading month, which is you know monthly, you're looking at uh, where fair fair value is, right? Fair value between um, an expensive and a bargain area, fifty percent. Between that is actually fair value yeah prices have come down to that fair value price now for me I tend not to look to buy anything or, or you know anything above uh, at least a monthly moving uh, fair value because that would be considered expensive right you want to look for um, not only demand zones but on a, on a daily or weekly time frame but also as well um, some confluence in terms of understanding where fair value is fair value for me has come back down to the dollar so I know now is a decent time to look for you know potential buy trade doesn't mean that you should buy right now if the prices go be below that then that's going to be a, bit, a better bargain right so um, just gives context to um, you know understanding value and that is really important uh, when it comes to uh, you know fundamental analysis so for me, uh, still continues to be dollar buyers, but I will be 
um, and I mean actually some uh, some dollar trades anyway, like the euro dollar. Um, so I will be um, uh, keeping my eye on um, on the fundamentals as to determine uh, what I should be doing with those trades. Now, um, moving on to the dollar yen. And the dollar yen, um, massive move last week, right? Um, I think prices were at the one forties, and they've literally just jumped up, you know, to to the one forty fives, and um, uh, very interesting. And I think the uh, the Bank of uh, Japan have literally now said um, that they are very concerned about a devalued yen and the speed at which it's devaluing, which is really important. And so um, there's talk of potential intervention. Um, or they're definitely, um, you know, um, looking to push the button. Um, not saying that they will, but um, there's definitely uh, pressure, a lot of pressure on them to do that. 140 was the line in the sand, and obviously uh, prices have gone beyond that. So now the Bank of Japan are uh, under a lot of pressure to to potentially step in, but they're going to have to probably, you know, wait a little bit just to see. Um, if you start to see prices drift higher again. I personally um, may take a little uh, short, not necessarily on the dollar yen, but um, but something like the uh, euro yen or some other uh, uh, yen uh, crosses. So um, yeah, as we as it stands, I'm still a buyer of the dollar. So if we get a you know quite a large pullback now, the from from the high of one to one four fives where it kind of just peaked. Uh, down to the one three sevens is you're looking at what's that about about um, about eight hundred pips right um, so that actually is a nice pullback um, into a nice demand zone um, and then we also know as well that at least um, the monthly fair value um, would be below that as well so for me um, I do like um, the fact that uh, this area here is a nice area of demand I think bets will be off if the Bank of Japan do come out and say that they are intervening. I think for me, then I will uh, probably hesitate on on trying to short um, any uh, yen uh, crosses. I think I'd have to just wait for the dust to settle and for for really value to establish itself. But until that happens, if prices just naturally drift back down to uh, this one three seven area uh, without the bank intervening. Bank of Japan intervening, then I think for me that is a decent um, that is a decent buy, and also as well it depends on you know what the dollar is doing uh, um, from a monetary policy perspective. But my bias still for now is uh, to go long on this currency pair. Looking at the uh, dollar Swiss, and the dollar Swiss actually has dropped like a stone um, from last week. So we had a nice uh, supply zone here um, and then um, pretty much dropped away, right? Um, there was I guess, maybe some risk sentiment going on. Um, and uh, yeah, we've come down into this demand zone, which I think is actually really nice. But I'm not interested in necessarily buying this currency pair uh, simply because you've got two central banks that are looking to high crates. Um, but if you are looking to buy the dollar Swiss, I think now is a decent uh, opportunity. If you if you sold the dollar and bought the Swiss franc against the dollar, uh, that was a really nice uh, technical level. I did like that, but um, uh, that well, obviously you're, you're a bit too late for that. And if you or if you did get into that, that would have been well done, right? Um, for me, I do think technically I do like this level here, the ninety four round number. I do really like that technically but I don't like the pair uh, to trade but those are your options for the uh, dollar Swiss uh, dollar CAD uh, the Canadian dollar hiked rates uh, this week and so um, you know capping the upside uh, for the uh, dollar CAD which basically meant that um, if you were looking to buy the Canadian dollar and they hiked by I think it was 75 basis points um, that was a nice little buy right just before they did and uh, yeah that's it so um, makes sense but again for me you've got two um, uh, pairs uh, two uh, currencies that are hiking rates and um, if you have if you do have two uh, uh, currencies that are hiking rates it's not to say that you that you can't or you shouldn't trade them um, because ultimately what you should get is actually a uh, an auction or a ranging market as um, is typically known on the uh, uh, on the web well, in fact, is actually um, uh, an auction and an auctioning market, which is basically um, 
you know, where buyers and sellers are in, a, in agreement of the exchange rate, right? So this has been, you know, an expensive area. This is again an expensive area. This has been a bargain area. So um, prices are un were unlikely to, you know, continue trending above that with the um, uh, Bank of Canada um, hiking uh, 75 basis points. But there's also a caveat to that, right, as well, because um, you have to have a really good economy in order to support rate hikes and then, the, you know, and to support price. Now, when we get to the euro, um, you'll see there's a difference between the ca uh, Canadian dollar, um, uh, you know, price uh, um, increasing in value uh, and the uh, euro, even though the euro actually did um, um, hike um, uh, their, uh, their rates by 75 basis points. But for me, not really a pair that I'm looking to trade. Um, but if you are, uh, that was really the uh, opportunity for you to get short and buy the uh, Canadian dollar against the US dollar. If you are buying the US dollar right now, I think uh, against the Canadian dollar, I think now is a decent time. I think probably for me, um, maybe around, I think the uh, the best area would be the, about the 127s if it can get down there, right? Nobody knows, but if it does, and you really think that the, the US dollar is a, is a bargain against the Canadian dollar, then that would be where you're looking to, uh, to buy. Uh, New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Uh, New Zealand dollar struggling at the moment um, against the US dollar, that is. And um, yeah, it makes sense in a risk-off environment. Um, uh, commodity currencies don't tend to do too well against uh, the dollar but um, and again for me it wasn't it's not really a, a, a pair that I'm interested in uh, taking although I'm a buyer of the New Zealand dollar against some other currencies uh, again I, I did say and been saying for the last couple of weeks that you know if I was going to be a buyer or seller my bias would be to the downside and you're seeing pretty much you know what has uh, been happening now we've got a bit of a pullback into some supply so if you are looking to get short here it's a decent area i think the one uh sorry 0 0.625 areas i think is probably uh, a nicer uh, zone um to get short if you want to get short on that from a buying perspective um i would probably rather wait for price to um i mean there is i guess technically there is a demand zone here because it has made higher highs higher lows so in fact i will draw it it was a demand zone but um, I don't think it's necessarily a strong area of demand, but um, it could be, right? But in the way that I trade, I really want to see some other things just play out before if I was looking to buy this. Um, namely, I would want prices to really go kind of higher and prove that there's demand, then pull back to that, that demand zone, and then look for, to be a buyer if I was looking to be a buyer of the uh, New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Um, moving on to the pound dollar, pound dollar again just keeps going lower, right? And uh, technically, um, I really want to be a buyer of the US dollar um, and short the, the British pound somewhere around here. But we do have um, uh, Liz Truss, uh, who is our new prime minister. Um, her energy bill, um, I get price cap may rescue UK inflation. And it has, and it may, uh, inflation may peak, right? So economists say freezing power and gas bills will cut inflation, which is basically what um, uh, they, uh, the, the, the economy needs, right? So stimulus now points to higher rates for longer, economists say. So um, economists at Barclays, uh, Berenberg, and Bloomberg uh, Economics said Truss's package to rein in soaring electricity and natural gas prices would have a sweeping impact on the UK economy and may manage to arrest inflation um, at July's reading of 10.1%. So, um, you know, the forecasts underscore the importance of surging um, the cost of living squeeze to the outlook of the UK by halting increases in utility bills. The government could stop the biggest upward pressure on consumer prices, giving, giving the both consumers um, and investors breathing room uh, to adjust to other pressures pushing up the cost of goods and services, right? So if consumers, um, you know, as far as like myself, are paying less on energy and um, and, our, and and food and things like that, or energy in more specific, then it can you know help 
the cost of living crisis. That's basically uh, the point in that. And um, there was something else interesting in here. Uh, was it here? I think, um, yeah, there was there was talk about, you know, Barclays uh, said inflation would fall back to 5% in 2023. Uh, and it says capping energy prices would provide a welcome help to uh, the Bank of England in regaining control of inflation dynamics. Uh, Montague wrote, prolonged hikes next to into next year are now less likely in our view. But there was something else in here that I th thought I had uh, highlighted. When was it? Where was it? Um, yeah, maybe it wasn't in here. But um, but yeah, so so uh, that's that's uh, that's pretty much it. I think um, uh, you know I think the the fact that. The, the Bank of England, um, you know, if inflation does start to come down, the Bank of England are probably likely to, you know, hike less. Um, and in fact, it could improve the, the economy. And so if the data starts to come in that the UK actually may avoid a recession as un unlikely as that seems, or maybe not go into a deep recession, then in fact, the pound could be a potential buy. But for now, against the US dollar, which is, I think, is on much better footing, I do think any pullbacks uh, to that supply zone for me are really decent. The 118 levels, I think, are decent uh, shorts. Um, right now, again, going long in the pound, you're really going long into um, into a historical level. Yeah, that happened in uh, 2020. But um, um, I don't think, for me, I think that's probably more profit taking as a reaction. Um, but who knows, right? In terms of you know buying the pound, for me, there's not enough uh, fundamentals for me to buy the pound um, at this area here. Because if if the market doesn't like Liz Truss's, um, you know, or doesn't think that her policy is going to you know um, uh, help the economy or as much as you know is per uh, is perceived, then the the, the pound is still going to be um, is not going to be a bargain here, is it? it? You know, it could fall further. So. Um, for me, the path of least resistance is still continuing to the downside, and so um, against the dollar anyway. And that's where my continued bias is. And um, if you guys want to, you know, find out a bit more about fundamental analysis, um, I am actually closing up a shop soon. As far as enrollment, eleventh um, of September is when I'm going to be closing. And not only do you get access to, you know, all the advanced supply and demand uh, zone uh, strategies that I teach, um, as well as capture pain relief, stop hunts, member only uh, Discord trade room access, which is here um, as well as um, a fundamental analysis spreadsheet and really you know it's it's all about you know the mentoring because as much as um, you can um, look at these things by yourself and watch you know a hundred a thousand videos unless you have somebody really to hold your hand and guide you through you know what is going on on a, on a daily and weekly basis um, it's going to be very difficult for you to kind of make it by yourself. There's only so many videos you can watch, right? How many videos have you watched on technical analysis, but yet you're still here, um, you know, chasing your tail, trying to figure out um, how to be profitable in trading? So, um, you know, the mentoring group is not like an other other chat rooms where you can come in and start, um, you know, people just chat nonsense. We're very focused um on uh, our fundamental analysis and technical analysis and if you do feel that you may need um, some coaching and some mentoring um, personal um, as I do have a um, weekly uh, calls as well live calls on a Wednesday um, these are also recorded this is one of our private pages um, where um, trading 180 videos as well where um, every uh, Wednesday we have a group call so last one was um, on the uh, 7th of September, which was here, and we spoke about what is priced in, information overload, reducing rates, and thinking in terms of, uh, versus thinking in terms of weakness, Bank of Japan intervention, you know, the pound of buy, and I put a question mark, for me it's not, but people were asking that question, um, and lots more as well, that's a two hour um, live group call so you can ask me questions here's one here as well as just you know some other daily videos that i produce as well so um and weekly videos that i produce so lots and lots and lots of content on top of you know the course 
um, you know, as well from a, from a each uh, from each discipline. So supply and demand trading course right there, capture pain relief right there, channels, and you've got stop hunts, fundamental analysis, loads and loads and loads and loads of content. So if you do want to join, um, 11th of September will be the deadline. If not, and you want to continue to uh, watch my videos, I definitely advise you to go through my you know free YouTube stuff um, and. Uh, um, and if you want to join next time um, or not, you know, I definitely will um, I look forward to working with you. If not, then I do wish you all the best in your trading endeavors. Anyways, let's get back to the charts and uh, let's go to the Euro dollar, Euro dollar, Euro dollar. I am actually in short on this um, and as are many of the guys in the trading room, um, it's a setup again that I'm not really going to go into on the uh, in this uh, videos beyond this video but um, from a fundamental perspective um, we did have uh, the euro high crates right and many people are uh, kind of scratching their heads as to you know well they hiked rates so why isn't the euro you know flying off the shelf why aren't investors um, you know looking to um, you know buy the euro and why isn't the euro going higher and um, really, I mean, we've we've known this at Trading One Eighty um, that it's all really about the um, the economy and the energy crisis. That is what is really holding the euro back. So, um, the euro trading is not about the energy crisis. Yeah, oh, sorry, it's all about the energy crisis, not ECB rate hikes. So, the euro fell below the dollar parity after the ECB rate decision. The ECB is fighting gravity in FX markets, says Danske Bank. Right, so Danske Bank, uh, as many as many other banks, are the big money. And one of the um, quotes, I guess, I, I, I kind of wanted to show you guys was, uh, where was it now? Um, uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, it says, it said that the, um, oh, where was it? There's a quote in here. Uh, the ECB is fighting gravity in markets. It's Christopher uh, Kajar uh, Holmolt. Uh, head of FX research at Danske Bank, Euro dollar has more downside in store, and ECB decision does not change that. And um, it says the rate, the rate announcements. Uh, um, it's in sorry, in its rate, rate announcement, the ECB struck a hawkish tone, saying it expects to raise rates further, um, uh, uh, raise rates further as inflation remains far too high. Um, and it says down here. We do not target, no, where is it? Okay, Euro strategists are united in their predictions that the way forward is more weakness. Yes, the more weakness for the Euro. Uh, Danske Bank's uh, um, Lomholt said, um, fair value for the currency is closer to 90 cents compared with current trading around 99 cents. Uh, I suspect that the ECB will have to produce these big heights just to hold the euro there, says so Stephen Barrow, an FX strategist at Standard Bank. So, um, you know, bank quotes, you know, these guys are um, the smartest guys, right? Way smarter than us. And so if they're saying that potentially, you know, prices could actually fall down to the 90 cent area, there's about a thousand pips from here. So um, that all obviously depends on the energy crisis and whether, um, uh, you know, Russia will turn off the taps. And um, there's uh, an article which says, uh, Schultz says Germany prepared for Russia gas halt over Ukraine. So again, they have to prepare for these things. There, there is there is a um, something on the horizon. And again, nobody knows, right? The euro could be a, at least a short-term buy if there's a resolution with, um, with Russia. It doesn't look like it. It's probably unlikely. But if there is, or it's, you know, they managed to kind of... Um, uh, um, uh, help the economy somehow and you know cap gas prices without having other effects on you know inflation etc and the economy then um then that would be great but um it's it's um it is an it is a, a possibility right so germany has prepared for russia to largely cut off gas supplies because of the war against ukraine so and it doesn't look like the war is um doesn't look like the war is uh, is 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 going to end anytime soon. So, um, yeah, when it comes to um, the euro, um, for me at this present time, 
Um, the, the, with the all the uncertainty around the euro for me, it's just a no brainer to go um, to go short, right? Could I be could I be wrong about this? Yeah, and if I'm wrong, it's okay. I'll just lose one trade, right? It's not not the biggest deal in the world, um, but you know nobody knows what's going to happen. But um, it looks like the path of this resistance is to the downside. Now that could change temporarily um, if they do manage to find a way. Uh, some sort of resolution then I do think that the euro will rally either way though um, for now I'm um, still to the short side and if you are going short then any pullbacks to a, um, a supply zone daily supply zone like the um, around here or the uh, 103s I think are you know very good levels to look for potential short trades um, if you are looking to be a buyer of the euro then any pullbacks into the 99 cent area is probably going to be your best uh, bet and uh, taking that chance and that gamble, right? In in the fact that the euro will uh, come out um, unscathed um, on the other side of this uh, conflict and the economy. Um, looking at the Aussie dollar and Aussie dollar, I was saying um, last week and week before that I do think that technically I do like this level. Um, really nice level, but for me, it'd be very hard to buy um, the Australian dollar against the US dollar. Um, I'm a buyer of the Australian dollar, just not against the US dollar. So, um, yeah, it, re it reacted from a technical uh, perspective, um, which was, uh, I wouldn't say surprising, but the, I think the, um, the the Australian dollar, they did high crates and they had uh, decent um, uh, GDP numbers as well. So that actually helped with um you know price um uh, stabilizing here i guess if you want to call it stabilizing but it was a bargain really here and so um you know uh, if if it was going to go any lower then that would have meant probably that the uh, australian dollar would have been seen as not a bargain here right but obviously uh, what's helped the australian dollar maintain its bargain um uh, value around here my buyers temporarily i guess have got involved in this and um is because of the um, recent uh, fundamentals so um yeah i don't really have a, a, a bias either way um in terms of uh, me trying to trade this but um, if I did, if I did, then it would still be, you know, I would say buying the US dollar, um, but I'm not looking to, you know, get involved in this trade. But if you are, I think now is a okay time. I think the top end of this, you know, the 70 cent area is probably the best area to look for uh, for short trades or say the best area, but it's a decent area and even better would be uh, the 71, around the 71 cent area. Um, if you were looking at getting shorts, getting long, obviously you'd have to wait for a pullback into the back into that you know 0 0.675 67 and a half cent area before looking at getting long um aussie yen and aussie yen again just that the uh, the yen is uh as um uh, devalued um uh, this week had an effect on obviously the australian dollar and um australian dollar japanese yen and now we have really a decent area to look for any kind of long trades now again i think the market really is ignoring um any kind of risk off sentiment so um yeah i think any pullbacks into this zone uh, you know the 95 area i think is actually a decent uh you know decent buy for the australian dollar um uh, providing that again the bank of japan doesn't come in and start to uh, intervene into markets and then for me i think all bets are off when it comes to buying or trying to sell the yen um, and buying anything against the yen until really the dust is settled so any pullbacks into that demand zone for me are decent and um gold right gold um of this you know historical level uh, over the past it's touched several times matter of fact so for me i'm not um, um looking to trade gold so much as i am looking to you know buy in terms of the physical metal um but i do think that this is going to be a bit of a long-term play i think as the dollar starts to strengthen if it does strengthen right let's say for example cpi comes out um, and it goes higher and then the Fed raised by 75 basis points, um, then I do think that gold potentially could still start to drop um, a little bit more. But at these beyond these prices, I think gold is an absolute 
steal um, in the coming future. Central banks, there was an article, I couldn't find it um, before I recorded it, but there was an article, uh, again, another article, because I think I posted one earlier in the year about central banks increasing their gold holdings. So um, that's become another recent um, report. So uh, central banks, you know, are not increasing their gold holdings for, for no reason, right? You know, so for me, I think um, just buying any any in and around this area for me is uh, is decent. Is definitely uh, decent prices. Again, not financial advice. Not telling you to go out to buy physical gold or trade gold or anything like that. Don't want to trade it. Don't trade it. Right? If you do, but you're unsure, then still stay out. Right? But um, point being is that for me, my bias actually long term bias is to is to go long gold. My short term bias. Um, is as long as the dollar continues to uh, strengthen, then it just pushes gold down to cheaper prices, right? It just continues to push gold down and may this may start to um, uh, break. And again, the more times the level is touched, um, the less of a bargain it becomes, right? Because it becomes now common price. So um, don't be surprised if you see gold actually break this, uh, this level and come down to maybe uh, this uh, longer term, um, demand zone just below it, which is from April 2020, um, the uh, 1647 to six, uh, 1656 uh, area. So, uh, so yeah. But if you are looking to potentially uh, get short on gold, then I think the nearest area to look for short trades is going to be beyond that monthly moving fair value, and then back down into the. Um, I'll back up into that uh, supply zone before looking at you know continued short trades anyways guys that's it for this week again don't forget that the um, trading 180 um, enrollment closes tomorrow so if you do want to join um, you know feel free uh, to join and reach out to me if you've got any questions and uh, if not I wish you all the best have a great trading week um, and uh, I'll speak to you all soon